Do you think some of these issues around Sandberg's leadership will cause long-term damage? I think it's unclear right now. I mean, this is not the last chapter in Sheryl Sandberg's leadership at Facebook. Um, look, she got a lot of credit for building a business, you know, with $50 billion in sales, uh, for, for helping Mark Zuckerberg take, uh, you know, Facebook to 2 billion users. But she's also the head of the legal and policy teams at Facebook. And, you know, uh, uh, on Friday took responsibility for some of the recent revelations, the, uh, you know, the uh, abuse and some of the relationships with these outside PR firms. And so she's got, you know, to answer for some of Facebook's recent mistakes for a lot of the bad publicity. But look, that's what leaders do. They take responsibility. That's what she's done. And we're going to see, you know, how quickly uh, and carefully Facebook can respond to some of these things. And yeah, if they can't write the ship, then I do think her legacy will be hurt. Some of the more specific details in this report, you know, that she not only prioritized her own brand over Facebook, but focused on messaging around the challenges rather than getting to the root of the challenges as she was focused on growth. For example, Brian, um, you know, Sarah reports on Sandberg going to D.C. in 2017 to try to smooth things over uh, around some of these issues, and the trip actually backfired because she didn't have enough concrete um, points to, to respond to some of uh, the queries of lawmakers. What's your take? Well, you know, I guess uh, there's a lot that's unsurprising in, 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 in the reporting, although I have to say that the, the nuances were really useful, and anyone who hasn't read Sarah's article absolutely should. Um, the bigger point around uh, Sandberg is that, you know, it does occur to me that I wonder if she's actually, after reading it, I wonder if she's been so constrained in her role because she doesn't have absolute control over Facebook. If she has any control, it's over her own self. So maybe that's what you focus on if you're never going to have complete autonomy over the whole company. I, I, you know, I, I, and I'd throw out two things. I think that uh, while there's elevated criticism around Sandberg right now, I think there appropriately was, certainly by some, myself perhaps included, uh, elevated concern about Sandberg last year. Uh, I think, you know, when, uh, certainly when Facebook's head of policy for EMEA goes and lies or actively misleads the British Parliament back in February, uh, that's a problem. Uh, when their advertising products are actively misleading uh, their customers, that's a problem. Uh, when they're consistently having metrics issues, again, these are also under Sandberg's responsibility. So I think that there are a lot of things that she's you know, appropriately going to be criticized for, but it's not clear where the responsibility law ends with her versus Zuckerberg. Uh, and, and frankly, the bigger problem is maybe more foundational inside of the whole company um, from the ground up. Ryan, would you like to see Facebook bring in a, th a third person? I mean, there is reporting that you know Mark Zuckerberg had been looking for, for a third person to, to handle some of these policy issues, but ultimately decided not to do so. Well, I, I mean, I think that the idea is that person would report through Sheryl Sandberg, if, if I understood it correctly, um, unless I misunderstood it. But I, I would throw this out. The big issue is a board level issue. I mean, let's go back to the days of Yahoo, right, and Marissa Meyer. Um, for all the criticism that Meyer rightfully deserved, after about two years, this was no longer Meyer's fault. It was the board's fault. So to be clear, the problems at Facebook have been pretty obvious. If, if they were obvious to the president of the United States of America in 2016, who told Zuckerberg, you got problems. They've had over two years, at least, of problems that have been pretty systemic. The board has to have been aware for quite a while. Uh, and so then the question is, what do the independent directors do? All they can do, I mean, they're the ones who are best positioned to get to the root of the problem, to figure out what is best for the company. Um, the fact is that if the company is, in fact, entirely dependent on Mark Zuckerberg, that's not a company. That's a sole proprietorship. They've got right. bigger and many problems. Of the, it, it, many of the board members predate Sandberg and, and predate her joining the board as well. Uh, Brian is alluding to, Brad, another story about UK Parliament seizing internal Facebook documents as part of their investigation into the Cambridge Analytica scandal, which is kind of huge uh, that we're seeing another government take such extreme action. Walk us through what happened here. Yeah, it's complicated. You have to go back four years when a, a small app company called 643 sued Facebook, saying that it was favoring some app developers over another, saying that it was being uh, you know, inauthentic in how it communicated privacy controls and what information it collected. So 
that lawsuit was here in California. Uh, the company was able to obtain through discovery some internal Facebook communications. Fast forward to last week when uh, you know the British Parliament very upset over Mark Zuckerberg's failure to testify in the UK. Uh, you know to the testimony that Brian alluded to earlier, being disingenuous, went and and got the founder of this app company 643 and got him to turn over those internal correspondences that they had obtained through the court process. So what do they say? I mean it could be internal communication between executives including Zuckerberg about how Facebook obtains information from who and whether they're being disingenuous uh, in terms of privacy controls and how they manage that information could be very damaging to Facebook. So Brian, how concerned are you about uh, this concern from other governments? Well, it's not that I'm concerned. I think more investors should be concerned. I mean, <laughs> the stock is uh, should not be up on this. I mean, I realize there's a market uh, level issue going on, but I think that uh, a better way to characterize it is this can't be good. It can only be bad. Uh, if you want to bet on Facebook versus governments of the world, unless you think Facebook is going to take its CapEx budget and invest in nuclear weapons, I'd bet on governments of the world. The power they have will be immense if they and when they choose to exercise it. And the British government is.